Hello, this is Chris Jewett from Extreme Flight RC. Welcome to build video two of the Extreme Flight 64 inch MXS. We are going to begin the build by finding the servo holes in the fuselage. The first hole is the elevator servo hole, which is directly in front of the stab on the right side. Use a hot and very sharp knife to cut out this hole to prepare for installing the servo. The rudder servo hole is on the left side of the fuselage underneath the stab. In the same fashion that we did with the ailerons, we're going to install the control horns in the rudder and the elevator. I'm going to mark around them with a pencil, cut the holes with a sharp knife, lift up the covering, and glue it in with epoxy. The great thing about using epoxy for this job versus CA is it gives you more working time to make sure everything is seated flush and square in the holes and if you make a mess like I do a lot, it's a lot easier to clean up. Next step is to install the servos. Here I'm using the automotive parts grabber to grab the wires from the servos in the tail and fish them through the holes in the lower reformers in the fuselage to keep the wires from smacking around while you're flying. After you've fished the wires through the fuselage, go ahead and install the screws, pre-drill them, and use a little bit of thin CA to hold them in place. Notice how the output gear on the rudder servo is towards the rear. In the manual it shows it the other way around, but I found that my push rods were too short for that to work. Since we're going to run 7.4 volts to the servos on this airplane, we're going to go ahead and modify the speed control in the receiver to handle that. First thing we need is a two cell LiPo. Now we need some sort of adapter to run the two cell LiPo into the receiver. Here I've just done a JST connector to a normal servo connector. That will act as the switch in the airplane. Now in the ESC itself we need to remove the red wire from the plug that goes into the receiver. You can cut it, but I like to just remove it so I can eventually put it back if I ever need to put it back into a normal application. So if you fold it over you get a nice piece of heat shrink that's just big enough to fit over the servo connector. Heat shrink it in place, that'll keep it from uh, shorting itself out on anything and it'll hold it there until you ever need it again. Now it's time to make your push rods. The shorter of the two push rods goes on the rudder side. For proper geometry on the rudder, you want the push rod to be on the top of the control horn on the rudder side. We're going to go screw, washer, bolt through the ball link, blue Loctite nut on the bottom side of the control horn. Then we're going to sub trim our servo to make sure it's exactly 90 degrees to the servo case with the servo arm and adjust the push rod to length. It's also always a good idea to make sure that the rudder servo is moving in the right direction before you do the sub trim because having to reverse it will reset the sub trim on you.
After you're happy with the length of the push rod, go ahead and put a washer on the bolt, run it through the ball link, use blue Loctite again with a nut on the back side to secure it. Now that you have the linkage complete, go ahead and do any sub trimming you want to do to make sure that the rotor is perfectly straight, and then we're going to set our mechanical endpoint limits. On the left side, the limit is the control horn actually touching the fuselage. So run your endpoints right to the point where it just starts to touch and then back it off a little. On the right side, the limit is the elevator. So just run it all the way to where it hits the elevator and then back it off just a little. You can get absolutely sick amounts of throw with the MXS. And of course the procedure for setting up the elevator on the other side is exactly the same. Now we're going to install the new 4016 500 Mark II motor. With the old motor you'll use these spacers, but with the Mark II motor you don't need the spacers. Out of the motor hardware kit, we're going to need the X mount and the taper headed bolts for the X mount. Of the two prop adapters, we're going to use the one that does not have the collet style. It uses four bolts to bolt on. And we'll use the little wheel collar that comes in the hardware kit to go up against the circlet. With this motor, there's one set screw on the collar. It's going to go flush up against the circlip that's already installed on the back of the shaft. And then we're going to tighten down the set screw right on top of that flat spot right there. The X-mount uses the four taper-headed bolts and we'll install it with blue Loctite and a good Phillips screwdriver. The prop adapter on this motor uses the four longer 3mm silver bolts that come with the prop adapter hardware kit. Again, we'll blue Loctite them in place and use a 3mm hardened Allen wrench to screw them onto the motor. Secure the motor to the airplane, we're going to use four of the four millimeter Allen screws and washers from the hardware kit. The only real consideration about putting the motor on is which direction the wires are coming out. I like to have them exit on the bottom of the motor box versus coming out on the side. Now that we've got the motor installed, we want to install the speed control and make sure the motor is turning in the right direction. We're going to install a six cell battery, turn on the radio, plug in the radio battery, 
You're going to listen for six beeps that'll tell you that the motor's signaling six cells. We want it to turn to the left like it would if you were hand starting the motor. I'm going to put my finger on top of the motor to feel which way it's turning. In this case, it's turning in the correct direction. Now I'm going to use some heat shrink to heat shrink the bullet connectors together to make sure that they do not come apart in the air. To mount the ESC, I've got a foam pad underneath. I like to put the ESC at a 45 degree angle so I can zip tie it to the center part of the motor box with one big zip tie. Then I'm going to use another zip tie to pull the wires out of the way to make sure that they don't rub on the cowling or anything else. You want to make sure you get it over the heat shrink part of the bullet connectors and that the zip tie is not so tight that it will cut into the wires. The next step is going to be to install the cowling. What we're going to do is use some masking tape to create little tabs that will go over the tabs that the cowling actually screws into. So what I'm doing is taking masking tape, folding it back over itself, and then ripping off a piece of masking tape that will then stick to the airplane. This will allow us to mark exactly where we want the screws to go on the outside of the cowling. I'm using a black sharpie just to dot where I want the drill hole to go through into those mounting tabs. Now we're going to pull those tabs out of the way, put the cowling in place, and then we're going to install the spinner and use as much tape as we need to hold the cowling exactly where we want so that we get a proper spinner alignment and spinner gap before we drill the holes. Once you're happy with the spinner mounting alignment and gap, we're going to use a small drill to put some pilot holes through the cowling into the cowling mounting tabs. Now we're going to remove the tape and install the screws. One thing about the tape is you want to pull it straight back and not out. If you pull it out, it will actually pull the ultra coat off of the wood.
As a final step, we want to make sure that we can get the canopy on and off because it is possible to get the cowling so tight that it's difficult to remove the canopy. After the cowling's on, go ahead and install your receiver and run all your wires. You want to make sure your wires are pretty snug, not so loose that they're flopping around and can actually pull out of the receiver. The Velcro that comes in the kit, we're going to run it around the battery tray and we're going to put some male Velcro on the battery tray to keep the battery from sliding fore and aft. Since I'm running 7.4 volts to the servos, I built a little tray on top of this cross member. Put a little piece of velcro on it and then we'll also put a strap on that piece as well just as a note the 450 milliamp two cell battery is good for about four or five flights for information on the different types of techniques for installing graphics like come in the kit for the 64 inch mxs go to the 48 inch laser video on the 104 inch extra build video we talked about vinyl graphic installation techniques for this kit, I'm going to use the roll-on technique. I've cleaned the area with alcohol and then I'm going to roll it off of the backing onto the surface, taking out the bubbles as I go. Here is a technique to keep the covering from your ailerons from getting loose. Because the ailerons are a sealed unit and there's no way for air to escape from the ailerons, when you put them out in the sun the air will expand and actually make the covering within the aileron get loose. It's not a problem for the wing because the wing has the root rib which is open which allows the pressure to equalize. So what I'm doing here is I'm finding the space between each rib and aileron. I'm heating up a poker and I'm just putting a small hole into each rib space. This will allow the air to flow in and out of the aileron and pressure to equalize. You can use the same technique for the bottom of the elevator and even on the rudder if you'd like. Here are the beautifully covered wood wingtips that come in the kit now. What I'm going to do is pre-install some bolts and washers and I'm going to blue Loctite the side force generator and the wingtip on in one piece. I'm using blue Loctite because I never plan on taking the wingtips off of the wing. <laughs> Here is the new mounting method for the 64 inch MXS and the 48 inch laser. To set the aileron throw, what we want to do is make sure aileron movement in all directions is the same on both the left side and the right side. So what I'm doing here is measuring the up deflection and then the down deflection, finding out which one is the smallest. Once I've found the smallest, in this case it was the top direction, I'm going to set the bottom direction to match. But I'm also going to keep that measurement and take it to the other side and make sure that we have the same amount of throw up and down in both ailerons on both sides. So the trick to making this method work is you have to measure the left aileron upside and downside and then the right aileron upside and downside and figure out which of those four deflections has the smallest measurement. Once you've found the smallest measurement, set each measurement to that smaller number. That'll give you equal aileron throw in all directions on both sides. 
The final step in getting this airplane ready to fly is to remove the cooling hole in the bottom of the fuselage. There's an angled former right at the back of the cockpit area that's a solid balsa former. That is the deflector that allows air to come out the bottom of the airplane. You need to cut the hole right in front of that former. Leave a little bit of excess covering that you can iron down because this area does get a lot of airflow. You don't want to cut it off flush. After you've sealed it, go back and hit it with some thin CA to seal the edges of the covering down to the wood permanently. This completes the 64 inch MXS build video. Stand by for more helpful build videos from Extreme Flight RC.